Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, an MSNBC guest made a shocking and unsubstantiated claim about maternal health on the network's airwaves this week, but no one bothered to correct her. Let's watch. We've seen studies come out talking about how women, one in three women in the South, are looking at potentially losing their life in childbirth, during childbirth, excuse me, postpartum period, um, or just, um, just during... Um, just, uh, excuse me, during childbirth, postpartum period, or um, just in the childbearing years. Um, am I able to start that over? I'm sorry. Caitlin, you said something that really was jaw drop. You said folks need answers, not prayers. Uh, all right, you tell me what the error there was, but the guest clearly knew there was an error because she wanted to restart the segment, which you can't do live. No, I don't even know what she was trying to say. Did she say one say. in three women? She said in one in, she said there are studies showing potentially that one, one in three, three women in the South will die during childbirth or in the postpartum period, which is typically the year after giving birth. I'm not sure one in three women died in childbirth in like the Middle Ages. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's when right. you have to go back to there to find out. I mean, yeah, childbirth used to be a very dangerous um, uh, event for women. A lot of women did die in childbirth. I still don't think it was happen, one in three. I don't know, it's not doesn't happen today at that rate. No, I, I, it's like I'd love very to, low. I would love to know which study she was citing. Yeah. That is obviously not true. And to try to link that to uh, any abortion restrictions is obviously another fallacy. I mean, she's trying to make the claim, I guess, that if women have a high-risk pregnancy, they'd mm -hmm. be more likely to abort. But even high-risk pregnancies are nowhere near that level of fatality for the mother. Um, and there are a lot of women who have high-risk pregnancies who don't abort because they actually want to try to have the child. So uh, it's just nonsense. Yeah. And, and you can tell by her face and her reaction that she knew she'd done messed up. Yeah. I can see why, you know, they want to do this segment. Um, I, I think uh, Democrats are really uh, foregrounding, um, you know, abortion as an issue that they've looked at in the polls as one that um, the rare issue that perhaps favors um, Joe Biden in some places or that is inspiring a lot of Democrats um, to to come out and um, and vote. Um, you know, you're seeing in a post row landscape um, efforts to um, to criminalize abortion in some states have not gone well, is at least the perspective I see. If, if you don't share that, uh, let me know. Um, how do you think Republicans are going to like what's their effective way to respond to that? Well, I mean, Trump has obviously gone with the federalist approach, which yeah. is whatever states want to do, I'll let them do. And I think that's smart. I like that. I'm yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's wise given what the landscape is. I mean, my position on this has always been that if you want to actually move the country towards a mo more pro-life position, you have to be willing to play the long game. And clearly right now, the polls bear out the fact that most people support some restrictions on abortion, but not really restrictive one, so most people support like a 15-week ban, which is what Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin and his uh, Republicans tried to run on in Virginia. They lost for many reasons. I actually don't think that was one of them, contrary to popular belief. I think that position was fine. Um, but you can't just go all in with a, with a total abortion ban no. in, some, in many states. Um, and so I think if you actually move to like a 15-week ban, people start to get more comfortable with the idea that yeah, um, killing a baby out of convenience is not super great, and like maybe we should crack down on that a little bit more. Yeah. I, so I think I think attitudes will change over time to where the country becomes more culturally pro-life, and then you can enact laws. I that mean, even the that. even the 15-week ban, the latest polling I saw on 15-week ban was yeah, it was about like 50 percent, or it was just over 50 percent. Like plurality. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, Americans have it's a very difficult issue for a lot of people. People have a wild range of views on it. It seems to be issues that are so um, so disagreed upon are are I mean are you know best left to decision makers at as low a level as possible. And I you know I agree with the decision that our our Bill of Rights has not, our you know at the federal level our system has nothing to say about this issue and thus it should be left to um, to uh, to the states to decide. You know that's actually a lot of uh, you know, pro-life, even like pro, there are pro-life libertarian people like Ron Paul always held that position that, you know, yeah, no, it should be decided by the state. So I think that is the, the right thing for, and it's not just, you know, Trump's saying that, Nikki Haley's saying that. I don't know why Lindsey Graham, of all people, introduced the idea well, that there should be a federal... Lindsey Graham is a warmonger, so he likes to drop <laughs> grenades in the middle of most election <laughs> scenarios. Um, so that's par for the course for him. He's really good at that. Um, he did that before the 2022 midterms as well. Yeah. Um, so that's just kind of his M.O. 
But um, the one thing I do find very incredibly dishonest is that the Biden administration and the Biden campaign, in response to Trump saying that he would leave the issue to the state, are, are to the states are now holding him accountable for what any state decides. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't get credit, by the way, that like California has, you know, basically no restrictions on abortion right. from the left, but they're going to hold him accountable for states that have either total abortion bans or six week abortion bans. So they're saying because Trump leaves the issue to the states where it's actually closer to the voters, it's his fault that Florida has a six week abortion ban. It's his fault that I believe it's Mississippi has a near total abortion ban. Kentucky has a near total abortion ban and like you can't have it both ways either he gets credit for the lax abortion restrictions mm. and the strict ones or it's all just the yeah. states in have trump's decided. america california will legalize abortion <laughs> right. wholesale yeah I, I, I see what you're saying all right thanks for watching free media please like share and subscribe and leave a comment letting us know how you feel about the show thanks for watching